In this video, we are going to delve into the most common coccidium of our pets, which is the isospore. The isospore affects dogs, cats and pigs. But keep in mind that they are species-specific. For example, the isospora carnis affects the dog, the isospora felix affects the cat. The cat isospore does not affect the dog, and the dog isospore does not affect the cat. Thank you for coming to Vet Kayla. My name is Emma. The isospora affects puppies and adults, however, the most common is that the signs appear in puppies. In young animals, which are crowded in poorly ventilated places, where there are several litters of puppies. The isospore causes weight loss, wasting, and diarrhea. This diarrhea may be grayish green in color, and may sometimes have a little blood in it as well. There are several causes of diarrhea, and one cause is coccidia. In this image, we can see a histological section of the wall of the intestine. This wall has several layers, the submucosa, the muscular layer and the one that interests us is the epithelium. Causes of diarrhea can be viral, for example, parvovirus, distemper, coronavirus. Other causes can be parasites, such as ancelostoma, trichuris, giardia, and coccidia. So there are several causes of diarrhea, and how can we differentiate them? There are different studies for each disease. To find the coccidian, we have to take a stool sample. And with this sample of fecal matter, we are going to carry out a flotation enrichment technique. We are going to find an immature oocyst or a mature oocyst. The most common is that we see an immature oocyst. The immature oocyst is the one that has just left the pet sick, in diarrhea, it is the first to appear. Then in the environment it will pass to a mature oocyst, which is characterized by having two sporocysts, they are those two little eyes, which look like two little eyes. Well, two sporocysts. This is what we see in the microscope observation, after carrying out a flotation enrichment of the fecal matter. We already talked about who it affects, the signs it produces and how we can diagnose it. Now we are going to continue with the treatment. If a pet has coccidia, a treatment with sulfidimethoxin has to be carried out, sulfidimetoxin. So how can we cut the cycle? First, by deworming the animals, whether they are adults and puppies, so that they do not eliminate the oocysts in the environment. That is one part, then the other part is to prevent this immature oocyst from becoming mature. And how do we do that? We have to constantly clean the fecal matter, if you have a dog, of course it will be easy, but we are talking about the fact that coccidia are normal when there's overcrowding, when there are many puppies. So there you have to constantly clean. Something that negatively affects coccidia is dryness, the sun, and also ammonium hydroxide. By knowing the isospore cycle, we can know where to cut this cycle, to prevent other animals from getting sick, and at the same time our pet continues to get sick. So, let's go through the cycle. A sick puppy releases an immature oocyst into the environment. This immature oocyst passes into the mature oocyst, and it will be ingested by another puppy. In the puppy, the coccidium will produce, in the intestinal wall, first asexual reproduction, and then sexual reproduction. After sexual reproduction, we will have an immature oocyst that will pass into the environment. This immature oocyst passes to the mature oocyst, and then the cycle repeats, this same puppy becoming parasitized, or its siblings from the same litter. Let us remember that adults can also get sick with coccidia, although they do so under a stressful situation, for example, a construction in the house, the arrival of a new pet, a trip, the absence of a relative for a long time. I send you a big kiss and see you in the next video.